Welcome back. I decided to split the next segment into two different videos. I'm going to do a video on the UVC G3 standalone, and then I'm also going to do a video with it joined to the Ubiquiti NVR. So this first video will be the standalone video. Uh, the first thing we're going to do uh, this weekend, I'm going to do a full stack Unify video, but for now we're going to use our Edge Router PoE. And I think I'm going to plug into ETH3 so I make sure that the PoE is turned on. And it should be the 24 volt. You have selected 24 volt for the PoE output on port E3. The device plugged into E3 must support 24 volt, otherwise it may be damaged. Yes, we want to continue. We will save that. And I'm actually, I just, I've taken the back off. I've just got the little tennis ball shaped part of the camera. I'm going to plug it in. And we're going to see if it comes online here. You'll be able to see on the edge router if the port becomes active. And I just felt the IRs kick on in my hand. And then we saw E3 come up. 100 meg full duplex, PoE 24 volt. So I'm going to find a place to set the camera temporarily. It is just, it is just the body. I still even... I still even have the plastic cover over the over the lens, and I'm going to leave that on there for a little while. All right, I've set the camera down, and the first thing we'll have to do is we'll have to wait and see if it's going to transmit. It should get an IP. Let's see, DHCP, and I've only got one lease so far. Oh, nope. Okay. Here we go. 2.240. So this is the first time this camera has been plugged in. And we're going to open up the interface, see which version of the firmware it's on. If we have to update the firmware, we'll do that. And then we'll play with it in standalone mode. Which, by the way, standalone mode is the mode that I use when I do my live streams. You can have it connected to an NVR and do a live stream, but... I prefer to just have the cameras do one thing at a time. Uh, what was that IP? 2.40. And just like every other Ubiquiti device, this should be UBNT and UBNT. By the way, you'll notice there's no checkbox. It just tells you that by logging in, you agree to the terms of service. And yeah, look at that. This uh, this is the live view. So this is sitting beside a, a server and there's a, a cable modem there. And if you've seen any of my posts where we did, we took a small Pelican case and we turned it into an outdoor enclosure for an outdoor Ethernet connection. Uh, my little table right here is actually a larger Pelican case. They're very, very versatile. So this is the UVC G3. This is the MAC address. We're going to go ahead and continue through this. I'm sure you've all read the terms of service. So we'll accept that. So now it's going to ask us, what do we want to name the camera? What language? And then what mode? So we're going to call this one... UVC G3, and we'll just put a 1 after it for now. Keep it simple. We'll keep it in standalone mode. And let's see which version of the firmware we're on. We'll have to go to system for that. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. 
So it's uh, firmware version uh, 3.2.0. Yada, yada, yada. So back over to the camera. On your, this is the, uh, this is the live view. Let me see uh, if you can see me move it around a little bit. Boy, that was that was horrible. I'm just gonna put it back there. I've still got the plastic on the on the device. What kind of frame rate are we looking at? It wasn't very smooth for being 30 frames a second. Now, <clears throat> my my edge router doesn't have a switch chip in it, so the switch switching is software based, so that there could be some performance issues there as well. But let's take a look at some of the options. So we still have the name. It is in standalone mode. Now on the bottom, let me see if I can find, see if I can find a picture of the bottom of this camera because this is so. So let's see if I can pull this up. So on the bottom of the of the G3. Right now, there's like a rubber cover over this section right here. And what this section allows you to do is to add external accessories. So that external uh, or the uh, bigger IR sensor that they've got. Let's see. Let's see if we can find that real quick. Uh, we'll pull up the camera, see if they show it here. Okay, so you can get a bigger uh, set of IRs for this. And so you can see this connector right here plugs in there. So when you, when you get this camera and you take it out of the box, obviously you've got no accessories connected to it. So there's just like a rubber cover over this, but when you do have an accessory that plugs in, it's, it's got this little connector. Now, it does make me wonder what other kind of accessories are going to come out. So the first one, <clears throat> at least for sure, is the optional IR range extender accessory. It significantly extends the night vision range to up to 25 meters or 82 feet. And we can see, okay, B&H has got it for 80. Baltic's got it for 73, 25. So shop around if you're looking for that. The camera. You can display the timestamp. I've got to click, I have to click save changes for that. So then you see the timestamp, which at time. That time's totally wrong. It's got the logo, so we can uncheck that. And you see that disappears. Uh, I am in Illinois, and Illinois is, for all intents and purposes, a two-party state. So unless you've got a lot of signage and a lot of special things, it is in our interest to disable the microphone. So now the mic would be off. Now this is where you've got your RTSP settings and you can see we've got the high which is the 1080, the medium and the low. We can adjust our bit rate and our frames per second. And what is this? So oh, you click show video it takes us right back up here. Go over to the network. Right now it's set for DHCP. So you can see the IP that we've grabbed and if there's no DHCP server available of course we get the 192.168.1.20 address. Let's hop back over here to system and so here this is where you can change the I don't know if you can I don't think you can change this username but let you know what let's try it. That'd be that'd be new. Um, Put that in. 
Okay, so I've changed the username and the password. Let's see what happens. Password reset. Are you sure you want to change the administrator's username and or password? Yeah, why not? And that is fantastic. I don't know which version <clears throat> that came out in, but being able to get rid of that UBNT username, that is, that is fantastic. I am going to change it back for now, just because uh, I don't want to forget. And when I go to do the next video, you'll hear me grumbling because I forgot the username and password, and then I've got a factory default it, and all that good stuff. All right, so back to the system tab. So you can change the username and password. You can change the English, or the, <laughs> the language right now. It's set on English. The time and, and date. So this gives us our time zone. So we are Central Standard Time. And I like to use ntp.uiuc.edu, which is the University of Illinois. So same that. And then if we had a different, uh, different firmware, we could upload that here. You've got your maintenance. Which, uh, we've got the view, view the camera log. You can see it runs uh, BusyBox, talks about the CPU, it's got an ARM7 processor, Linux kernel 3.10. So you can dig through the logs. It's always fun to look at logs. You, you can learn a lot. You can download the support file. Oh, there it goes. Uh, I was being impatient. You can reset the defaults or reboot. And then if we go up here, we've got the little icon where we can do full screen. And then we've got the con configuration icon so we can mess with the brightness, the contrast, the hue, the saturation. We can denoise. We can mess with the sharpness, the WDR, the AE mode. Oops, where'd you go? We can flip or we can mirror. So this is this is kind of it for standalone. For the standalone mode. Um, to do the live stream, that's not actually done through this. You have to SSH in and execute the command for the live stream. And I will do a video on that. Real quick, let's just see what the video looks like. You see our beautiful wall. Beautiful, beautiful wall. Another beautiful wall. So I've only got about a three foot ethernet cable on this right now. When I do the NVR video tomorrow, I am gonna mount this camera outside so you'll get to see that so if you have any questions please post them below please give a thumbs up please subscribe and as always comment share and if there's anything you want to see we'll see if we can make it happen and come back for the nvr video and the live stream video